What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Smoking Tire Podcast. This episode is brought to you by Dylan Optics Sunglasses. You know those really cool glasses I'm wearing in every episode of the show? The ones with the matte finish lenses where it looks like they're fogged up, they don't reflect. Those are Dylan Optics, and they are sweet. I've been wearing them for almost 10 years now, and I will never put on another pair of sunglasses. They are ace. Uh, the glass is really good. The frames fit well. The plastic ones are really durable. Uh, the aviator ones are really fashionable. And if you go to the smokingtire.com and you click on the partners tab, there's a Dylan banner right there. If you use that link to go to Dylan Optics and order yourself a pair of sunglasses, I will give you a smoking tire t-shirt for your trouble. On the house, all you got to do is use that link, that link instead of going to dylanoptics.com. Just go to the smokingtire.com, click on the partners tab, and the Dylan banner, and uh, and I will give you a free smoking tire T-shirt if you buy a pair of these amazing sunglasses. They're not, you know, they're expensive, but they're like Ray Bans or Oakleys or Maui Jims, and that the glass is really, really good. Whenever uh, people ask me about them uh, to try them on when they see me at a car show or whatever, they're always amazed with how how amazing the glass really is. Dylan Optics is the official eyewear of the Smoking Tire podcast. Also, we got Beeline Coffee in the house. It is what I drink every morning, afternoon, and well, not night anymore because I gotta go to bed sometime and the stuff's got a lot of caffeine in it. Uh, this, the roasted tire is my personal uh, a blend, uh, although it's not actually a blend. It's a single origin roast. It's medium body and, and uh, oh my God, it's so delicious. But Beeline's got other roasts as well. The classic roast, the uh, Snapshot Espresso. There's a decaf. Uh, my friend Cameron Weiss has a roast. So try all the different ones at Beeline Coffee, uh, not just the roasted tire, although that is my personal favorite because it was like bioengineered for me. Um, but use code TST at checkout for your entire Beeline coffee order, and I will give you 15% off your whole order, big or small. Doesn't matter if you got one pound, 10 pounds, or an, e- an annual subscription to their coffee program. Code TST will get you 15% off at Beeline coffee. It is just the most delicious coffee around. A couple other folks have, uh, have tried to send me their coffees because they know that I'm into it, and I have tasted all of the coffees that uh, that people gave me. John Klein sent me another car-themed coffee. It was all right, but it frankly was not nearly as good as Beeline. So code TST, 15% off your entire order at Beeline Coffee. All right, uh, on this episode of the Smoking Tire Podcast, my buddy Spike Ferriston is in the house. Uh, he is a household name in the California car scene these days, a uh, serious Porsche enthusiast. He's owned, I mean, two dozen different 911s. Uh, he was a writer on Seinfeld. He wrote some of the more classic episodes of, uh, of that show. He had uh, the car matchmaker on Esquire and is now the host of Spike's Car Radio, the other great car podcast happened right now and uh, he's in studio with us today spike ferriston on the smoking tire podcast travel mug it's a travel do you mug. have scissors <laughs> <laughs> yeah actually welcome to the floral show with spike <laughs> spike uh I love ferriston flowers. in the house ladies and gentlemen it's the smoking tire podcast as spike shows us his floral skills you know when you get older like me you like to you like the flowers you like the plants you know my friend Vinny, who's staying at my house look brought flowers just to brighten up my kitchen wow look at really this. yeah he did <laughs> and now look i'm brightening up your now podcast you're brightening up the studio i did not buy these i found them in the front <laughs> boot with one of the people i share this, this car is, with well the funny thing about spike is most car people are very possessive over their cars myself included and yet you, you are totally comfortable sharing a fleet of cars <laughs> with two other people well you, you, i have one car that i share with two guys and that's really pushing it the, the yeah. gt2 rs yeah but but zuckerman and i are very much aligned as far as cars and how we care for them and how they should be returned to the other person <laughs> so and, and i was just telling zach about it if, if you break it like uh two days ago i got i got a five inch nail and the gt3 touring yeah i handle that yeah right 
Took wheel it to the seventy six station. Wheel tire warranty. <laughs> well, I took it to the seventy six station. I love, I love getting tires fixed at that seventy six. The station. one at the corner of Bundy. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah, it's an old fashioned gas station. The guy yeah. just yanked it out. He goes, "I can't. It's a performance tire." I go, "Do it. Just fucking do it." And bro. he did it, and he fixed it, and then it'll go to Beverly Hills. I'll take it in um, I've, I've a Wednesday the, and and put a new tire on it, I've and then hand tires it off to at racetracks and gone back out on the track before. Right. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Especially for just driving around L.A. It's fine. Right. Yeah. I still don't know how that works. So what are they putting in that hole? It's like, uh, it's like. well, it depends on the kind of damage that you have. Assuming a typical puncture. It was a straight puncture yeah. right in the tread. So they do the, it's like a little rubber worm covered in <laughs> yeah, glue. Yeah, what is that stuff? I think it's, is just it rubber? rubber? Is it made of rubber? I think it's probably rubber and some sort of yeah, chemical compound that bonds something. to the, the rest of the tire. And it yeah. sticks out like this. Yeah, a little bit. And he yeah. put a little uh, glue a little on, goop it, on it. And then he took a little razor. <laughs> it still, it had a yeah. Stub like that, and it sort of expands a bit in the hole. Yeah, and uh, and it, I think I think it bonds a little to the rest of the tire. Oh, definitely. The rest of the, ru- yeah, rest definitely. Of the rubber. Yeah, and I then enjoy once that. It's in there, unless you're really pushing on that tire, that yeah. thing should be good for a bit. And you know what they say at the end of it? Twenty dollars, please. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's, like it's nineteen fifty. Yeah, and then that's you're the driving. only affordable thing at that gas station. <laughs> by the way, that gas station is like five dollars a gallon. <laughs> they have racing they gas have there, race which gas. is nice. Mm-hmm. But it, that was at last check ten dollars a gallon. Actually. But you know that's expensive but by any normal standard actually but for race gas that's not bad really it's not bad for 100 yeah if you're at, four or five bucks. if you were at a race track mm-hmm. that shit would be 14 dollars a gallon that's not right yeah that's airline fuel it is uh is it is that- <laughs> what are we doing here today we're we're, we're, uh, we're doing a live youtube podcast they're all live on youtube now oh, that's all right how, that's how oh, we yeah. do this no i watch the show a lot that's how we do this. Spike is the host of Spike's Car Radio, which is not live on YouTube. No, and um, which you are a frequent guest. Yeah, over over the phone for the first time last. Yeah, time. that was great. Yeah. I did, it was shockingly um, <clears throat> professionally done by Will. I didn't think I, he was like, "Hold, hold, please, I'll patch you in." Right. Wow, patch me in. So you had a good experience. Yeah, it was all right. All right, I'm going to do more of that. Yeah, I, I liked it too. How was the the sound quality? It sounded perfect. It was good. Oh, People okay, loved great. the show. Great. They said, "Please, no more guests. We just want you, Matt, Farah, Zuckerman, and Jerry." That happens with us sometimes. Yeah. where I'll do guests, and then people <laughs> are like, "Can you just do a show with Zach?" Yeah, and I did a show with Zach earlier this week, and it came out fucking. Yeah, great, well, that's why folks are tuning in for you guys. They I just want to listen to you. I guess they, I, they I, wanna... like your phantom. Yeah, look at your that. Phantom there it is. There. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So so <laughs> we. Fun. Had somebody I don't even remember who was on, and she canceled at eight a.m. that morning. And, and you know, the good news was I, I didn't really want to do the interview anyway. So I said, Zuckerman, let's just let's do a show. And we called up. Uh, I think I called What's you. What's happening and with Jerry. your hair in that photograph? Is that this is. You is that know, the Seacrest? Is there's a lot a- of controversy <laughs> with these photographs, right? No thought Spike. is going into them. I wake up in the morning. Usually this is at 8 in the morning. I come in. I do one of these podcasts. Zuckerman has to go to work. I have to go to work. And on the way out the door, I usually have my sunglasses on. And people are like, why do you have your glasses, sunglasses on all the time? Because I want to leave right after the picture. And <laughs> I just want to get my car and go to door. work. Right. So no thought is put into these photographs. But the volume of your hair in that picture. Wow. Yeah, that's... You, okay. Is that if I don't put any that... product in my hair, uh, my hair lays flat and fine, and it's horrible. I am the nerdiest of nerdy guys. So I take a handful of whatever goop my kids have, and I you're, throw it in my hair. You're a Dapper Dan man? Again, I don't, as you can tell, don't look at what happens as I go out the door. <laughs> you do that out the door as well. Fucking because then I'm just in an office with my partner, John, working. And unless I have a pitch that day or a shoot or something like that, I just, I don't want to do anything. Right? <laughs> yeah, you're doing radio. Look, I'm sh- I shave. Yeah. Once a week, I shaved two days ago. Once a week? Oh, I shaved last night. I went to the Laker game last night and I shaved. How was it? They won. It was fun. There you go. It was fun. Who they, who they play? Uh, Sacramento. Nice. It was, uh, it was, you know, now I won't go for eight years. It was fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I saw Norm Pattis. Oh, yeah. From Podcast, from Podcast One, Long, who yeah. runs my uh, operation. He's sitting right on the, he's right on the court. He's a big Laker fan. Does yeah, he have, doesn't he have Laker colored shoes? I think he does, right? He's huge. Huge. Who, and he was like, you know, patting the players on the back as they were coming up. It's, fu- it's funny all the different etiquettes of that professional mm-hmm. sport versus any other one. You know, uh, uh, LeBron, it was his birthday, but he wasn't playing. He arrived. He maybe, wasn't playing. He wasn't playing. He was injured. He's oh. on the DL. He had an MRI, but nothing's wrong. But they still they want to take a little time with it. He walked in 
two or three minutes into the game, it already started, and everybody applauds. Oh, he arrived he's late. here, and he had a funky outfit on, you know, he, like a, a like a blazer and a striped, kind of like a Where's Waldo thing happening <laughs> with some jeans, and you know, then he's this really personable, you know, looking at fans, waving to everybody. It's well, not like baseball. It's not like football. They don't hide in the dugout. No, everybody is hanging out together. Yeah, there's no, I mean... They and s- I said to Norm, too, I go, the, you, I can't believe you touch players. He goes, yeah, no, we're cheering them on. Somebody's got to do it. There's uh, the, the, there's no barrier between the players and the no. fans in basketball. No. You're just right there. We had a great time. I, I brought the kid. My wife loved it. There's no cold weather. I haven't been to a single basketball game in Los Angeles. I need to go. I used to go all the time. My this da- was the day to go. My dad was like the guy. Yeah. My dad was that the Norm Pattis guy. Yeah. Because he was the chairman of Foot Locker for fucking ever. <laughs> it said Foot Locker at, at Madison Square Garden on the backboard. And Here's so some- I got tickets, but That's I didn't great. give a shit. I'll tell you what else. Well, he played in high, in college, right? My dad played in the Final Four in 1973. No wow. Yeah. Does he, he still play? I mean, he's six foot five. He's fucking sixty five years old. He doesn't play, but like he up until he is, <laughs> he's in he the was, and one competition. No, like when I was a kid, like and he would I'd play on. I was my trying high to school. set him up for some jokes. No, sorry. <laughs> Go with the I premise. Got, you know, the, speaking does of, he play? Oh yeah, he plays. Speaking of and one, he went to college with them. The founders of and one were were teammates of his in college. No shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I right. like wow. that show, that show yeah. when I was out. You know, I get the distinct impression last night, not watching a lot of basketball, that the Lakers were sitting back for three quarters and just chilling <laughs> and then in the last five minutes of the game just turned it on and the fans and woke up in the last five minutes of the game and, won. In, and then they won but until then everybody I, I felt like my my boys and my wife and I were the only ones cheering for the game and like we were out of sync like hey I you mean, don't everyone's do that. Uh, high yeah it's no I think you just you don't <laughs> Everyone's very high you don't do it that till the very end and then we're gonna win and then they did, and it was very exciting. It's like, it's like isn't that uh, isn't that sort of like Patriots football? Isn't that how Patriots football no, works? No, not this season. No, unfortunately, no. I, no, not. I don't follow fucking football. Uh, well, up till this season, we have not been winning the way. I think we it was should up till this season. That's how Patriots <clears throat> football works. Yeah, yeah. No, we're having uh, a mediocre season. So anyway, time. more importantly, yeah. the Plan Z with the car sharing has okay. resulted in flowers being left by Moise as well as a. Should we want you want an orange? <laughs> so <laughs> Moise and I oranges. and and Zuckerman share a GT2 RS, which I, you drove here and it's which lovely. I was going to pick up four or five days ago for this New Year's break, and Moise said he texted us, "Where is the car?" And I said, "Set Connor, do you want to drive it?" It's like, yeah, and we're pretty laid back about that. I'm like, take it, Moise. He drives it probably the least, and he had the car for three or four days, and then said, "I'm going to." Uh, Drop it tomorrow. You, were you out with us yesterday in Malibu? You weren't there with us, No, right? I was there so, the day before. Yeah, so he drove out, and he said, I'm going to leave it there this morning. So this morning, I dropped off the 87 911 I share with Zuckerman. Which is lovely also. Which is full of gas and clean. It's beautiful. <laughs> and then I went and picked up this mess, and I knew it was going to be dirty. <laughs> Moe said, look, it's dirty. And I'm like, that's cool. Don't worry about it, because he's driving it. But um, it was out of gas. It had no gas in it. That would drive me nuts. The no gas is bad. That's Moise. I love Moise. So it's fine. Again, I kind of- How's kinda, the car, though? Forget that it was dirty and had no gas no, in but it, this but the, when you drive, how do you like the People want to know about this sharing thing, and I'm trying to illustrate- Well, because I don't fucking- You got to really find someone that cares for the car in exactly the you way you to, would care for the car. No, but see, Moise isn't that guy. Or is rich enough where it doesn't matter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you also see that front chin spoiler? He banged into a parking cement thing, so that thing's all jacked up. Which, that happens anyways. And then as I'm walking in here, he, it's him calling. And I go, hey, Moise, what's up? And he goes, hey, I left my groceries in the front boot last night. And I'm like, what? And I, as, while I'm driving here, I'm smelling. I'm like, what does this car smell like? What was, what was in the groceries? It just didn't smell find? like a new GT2 RS. <laughs> it smelled weird. And then it, what, now I know the smell. It smelled like produce. It smelled like produce and these flowers. There wasn't flowers. any meat, was it? No, these flowers. Okay. Well, there's worse things to smell like <laughs> than beautiful, limp flowers. And uh, like he could have left a gallon of fucking milk in the front or something. Uh, he, here's the deal. I knew this was going to happen every time he dropped the car off. I knew there'd be no gas. I knew it would be dirty, and I knew there'd be stuff wrong with it in his hat. I'm fine with all of it. You just have to... But he's got money. No, you just have to kind of be laid back about it. If it were a different car, say the Zagato that we're having built in Milan, yeah. 
Uh, Moise might not be cut in on that one. <laughs> <laughs> because that one, we're really taking care of in a different way. So this one, it's a modern car. It's <clears throat> meant to drive. It's just fun. To, I mean, it's exactly. nice, but it's just a, it's kind of just a car. Yes. As opposed to something that is truly unique and special. Yeah, we want to beat this one. We want to enjoy it and beat it, because obviously there's new stuff coming at yeah, some point. Yeah, there's right? always new stuff right, coming. Right. That's, that's the thing about new stuff. Yes, and this car is spectacular. You buy. That's why... I have a hard time getting the newest, greatest thing ever right now because it's just, there's another newest, greatest thing, and I'll be annoyed I don't have that one, and yep. I don't have that kind of money. That's so, right. Well. So, 85 Countach, which, by the way, is me and <clears throat> your had a little hiccup. We had a little hiccup at the Countach. No. I started it, I started it and went, pop. It is pop when we started, and nothing. Like, the fuck is that? And... We popped the the bonnet. Fortunately, Vinny, who I just I've been mentioning, is a mechanic among other of his talents, he's, and he's also Italian. Which is very and helpful. he looks like Mark Wahlberg. And he looks just he like Mark Wahlberg. And he <laughs> he goes, Who's he goes, pop the pop the bonnet because we were going to go for a drive to meet Spike <laughs> for lunch, and one of the plug boots had blown out, literally had blown out of the cylinder. Okay, which is weird. So we shove it back in. I start the car again. Pop! It pops out again. So Vinny correctly determines that uh, the actual spark plug had backed itself out and come and the compression so air was, was blowing through. it by oh, and wow. blowing the boot out. So we fucking he, we didn't have the right socket. So we went to AutoZone and by the way, fuck AutoZone. Just gonna throw why? That in why would yeah, you they say had a little. I, they didn't treat me the way I like to be treated when I went to return my unused tools. <clears> today. So maybe fuck the AutoZone guy. Yeah, that, it was, was more AutoZone a... policy. But um, <laughs> and uh, anyway, they. Uh, uh, we tightened it up and got fucking good to go. Fix it in five minutes. So Vinny, wow. he was like, he's like, what do I owe you for like rent this month? I was like, nothing. Keep fixing the Lambo. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's how expensive a Lambo repair bill is. It took him five minutes and that's like a thousand dollars. I was like, you just saved me a G. We're good. We're fucking golden. So um, he's living in your house. Yeah. Well, he looks for uh, he's just moved out here. So he's looking for a place. That him looking like him. Mark Wahlberg really helps you like that guy if you like Mark Wahlberg. <laughs> you do. I keep telling him like, we should go into a Wahlburgers and just not say anything. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you really? Immediately, you're like, hey, I like Mark Wahlberg. You look like Mark Wahlberg. He looks just like him. Yeah, he could use that. Yeah, he could go really... He, can you... Are there Maybe pictures of him to, on his Instagram? Vin, it's Vinny Russo one on Instagram. And then um, he knows about cars and you're in. Dude, he, uh, he high, is actually... He has come in so handy... In a variety of ways right. throughout the years, when it comes to fixing shit on the fly, yeah, there he is. There he is, Wahlburger. He re- <laughs> does he get up at two thirty in the morning and work out? You know what? He <clears> does. He, he does. gets up at fucking five and works out. Are you yeah. positive this isn't Mark Wahlberg <laughs> sure. that you're hanging out with? I'm pretty sure. Just wants to be a regular guy and is living with you. I'm sure because Nino actually does <laughs> look at work him in that Wahlberg. shot. That's Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, with a guy. Wow. I don't know who the other guy is, but so he's now he's getting like, up in your gym too and working out. Yeah, he works out early. He's what time? Super cons- like f- literally five. Is that waking you up? That's crazy. No, he's really considerate about it. He he's the, one of the quietest worker outers that I have seen ever. That's and he's weird. got a fantastic license plate on his Cayenne. That license plate right there, I can't even actually <clears throat> read it just from here. W, it's it's a really good one. It's real evasive. Um, anyway, the car sharing works out for you better than it would probably work out for me. Well, why don't we do one together and find out? Ooh, buddy. <laughs> Ooh, uh, the, the, the cash register is churning. <laughs> What's the next thing on the list that we need to do? Stuff just buy comes old, up every should week. Should we share an old 911, like a 993 maybe? Uh, I really want to get one of J.G. Francis's uh, Mercedes diesel station wagons. What's Who's J.G. Francis? At Mercedes Motoring. What's Mercedes Motoring? Do they, do they refer old diesel yeah, Mercedes yeah. wagons? Yeah. Oh, I've never heard of that. That sounds. How like can you of, have never heard of it? You, yes, know. you have. I don't know fucking everything. There's kind. Of, there's people. Like, can you in, find a? He's in Glendale. Mercedes JG Motoring. Francis Mercedes Motoring. We had them on so they car res- matchmaker. They restore. Uh, Jerry was buying cars for them. I think before any of us, huh. and they buy these old Mercedes diesels and restore them. Yeah, All right. They, see, I'm they, about they, this, but you know what I would like great. to get down on is a coupe, a CD coupe. Are you about that? Maybe. Depends I really the like the look of the of the coupe. Wow, JG, they, get, is that inventory <clears throat> he's got? These this are all is stuff sold. he's all bought and sold. See that little lime green one down there? It's got a purple this? pinstripe. Yeah, 
it's stuff like this. Oh, see, that's fantastic. Gets me really excited. That's fantastic. It's a 250C gasoline What do you think coupe. he would sell? What does he sell something like that, that for? That car was offered to me, and I stupidly did not buy it for 35 Oh, so that's reasonable. We're, and not, I drove, we're not talking like I drove this car from money. Glendale all the way out to Venice to shoot with it and had, listening to Led Zeppelin, had the best drive of my life. <laughs> Definitely top five. Did it drive great? Yeah, yeah. Easy. Yeah, it was amazing. Well, look, there's see that no B pillar right there. Yes, you're just that's looking. That's the shade yeah. you're looking just for. The best. This that truck is as long as the hood, which is rare. And, and his look, genius it's... move, JG Francis, is he put a purple pinstripe on it on top of that green. And at first that's you fantastic. go, what? Are you, what's happening? And then you have the experience. And you go, my God. So do you? Would you buy from his inventory, or would you bring <clears> him a car to restore? Now here's the only problem. JG is a little nuts, and he doesn't. He won't mind me saying that. <laughs> he finds these cars and then has trouble selling them. Why? He likes to keep them. Oh, uh, trouble mentally, mentally letting them go. Letting them go. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Just, they call this the fo the fostering complex, right? Like if you foster a dog, yeah, and then you don't want to find oh, that's it a new good. home. He has yeah, a fostering yeah. complex. Yeah, yeah. So he sent us uh, a station wagon, a diesel station wagon, in a in a beautiful navy blue. Would and you a, prefer a diesel or and a gas? Then he said you can have this, and then that's the last we heard of him hmm. so we were already down the road yeah we thought on a deal for a car and now that's disappeared look at that that's very lovely he's got some he's got some real yeah, winners he's got he's the best through. taste he goes anywhere in the world to find these cars frequently you'll see him on his instagram kind of flying somewhere and then driving back and what something was, uh, he's found he just did i think three thousand miles in a car i saw this morning what I mean. was jerry buying for him i don't know he did mercedes <clears throat> jerry likes old uh, mercedes diesels does he yeah oh i didn't he, even they, he used to uh, when he was starting in stand-up in the 80s i guess these were if you were successful this would have been mm -hmm, the car that mm -hmm. you bought which he was not making that kind of money so i guess he likes to now get to live, those cars to live that yeah and then he'll get in a car with comedians and they'll go do gigs in it well they um we he, broke down at uh, shea stadium in one <laughs> once <laughs> he did do the uh, the low nose uh i think it was a, a what a 350 maybe or something a convertible in comedians and cars getting coffee Oh, yeah. He yeah. had a, a nice... I don't know that that was his car. I don't know where it came from. I think it was on the East Coast, so mm -hmm. I'm guessing maybe not. Is he, this yeah, guy's in L.A.? <clears throat> Glendale, you said? I think he's in Glendale Dude, now. I got to go yeah. check this dude oh, out. Oh, you'll love it. It's one of the most orderly, beautiful garages really? you'll ever Is there see. an inventory there, Zach? <clears throat> does he have an inventory list? <clears throat> no? <clears throat> he does. He'll have the coming soon stuff. Wait, coming is that soon. what? What is that the station wagon? Is it Right here? Yeah, click on that guy. Yeah, that's, that's, oh, that's, that's the my color. car. <laughs> that's my car. <laughs> that's the color too. That's that navy blue. In when I was in like elementary you can school, can have that car. When that I was in elementary school, me. every mom had that yeah. car. Every mom. And if you if you told one of those moms that that thing would be thirty five grand today, that I don't know the price be. of this car by the way, but it's somewhere in that area. There any no other shots. It's the only one. I Just think that has an cell. emblem delete on the back, This is too. also a gas I don't know car. if it has that funny little rear wheel. I, I don't care about the diesel part of it. I don't actually either. I For a minute, I was all about the diesel, and now I'm kind of less about the <clears> diesel. <throat> They're interesting and fun to drive. They're very slow. <laughs> really Sometimes slow. it feels like the throttle is not connected to anything. Yeah. You ever you drive just, a 240 diesel? Yeah. The yeah. 240 is like undrivable. Yeah. JF, uh, <laughs> our producer from Drive on NBC Sports, his brother had a 240 diesel four speed mm -hmm. that was the slowest thing I've ever that. driven that wasn't Ooh, like a that. Mack truck or yeah. a dump truck. No, you need the turbo diesel. Yeah, at a to, minimum. To, for it to work. But I mean, as a, I don't, I don't have a Mercedes this old, but I love my 2001 Mercedes very, very much. Mm -hmm. It's fucking great. Yeah, it's got it. It is. It feels old, but at the same time, it's so well behaved mm -hmm. and not a pain in the ass. It's awesome. I could, I would go older with my next one. Maybe a 560 SEC. You're in the perfect position to do a Plan Z deal with your car storage I know, facility because I have somewhere to keep things. It's perfect. Yeah. You start brokering deals with some of the guys. Let's buy that together. It's there. I'm thinking about Somebody takes getting, it, a, brings uh, it back. getting a dealer's license as well. You should. Because I'll have a facility. We've all thought and, about this. But most people don't have the facility. You, you need, need the facility, facility right? You need a little bit of a education, right? A little testing and Yeah, but it's this bullshit. And that. Right. Fucking mongoloids do. <laughs> wait, <laughs> dumb, wait, what? Wait, dumb what? goombas get fucking dealers' <laughs> What did you say, mongoloids? What yeah. does that mean? It means, I mean, I, pr I probably doesn't, I'm probably not using it right. But <laughs> no, you're not. You're Louis C.K. this morning. Oh, no. You can't say that. Lu uh, <laughs> Louis, I don't know. You know, I was a big fan of Louis, but I don't really like what he's doing recently. <laughs> I don't like the decisions <clears throat> he's made recently. Like, what can I say? 
Where, well, yeah, where was this joke, first of all? Did he do a joke in a small club? I, I it sounds like he did. It was a joke in, in, in bad taste. Look, it, Wait, it, which joke? The, him with it, the Chris Rock thing that went around? No, he was or? doing this, ve- I thought, a very funny run that ended on a very unfunny note. Um, it was a joke about the, the Parkland kids, but it was more of a joke about uh, how the youth of America used to not give a shit, right? They used to be the crazy ones, and the adults were the reasonable ones, and he was kind of turning it on his head. It was a very funny premise, and it was joke, but it ended with this dig on the Parkland kids because this, this shooting had happened to you. You know, you think you've got now, you've got something to say. It was not, it should not have been part of that joke. Hmm. It was okay. a mistake. Yeah, yeah. I I didn't but see now, the bit, but the bit I read the transcript it was reco- of it. And it was recorded. Wasn't, it wasn't good. No, it's not <laughs> it good. Wasn't good. But he's trying out material in a small club somewhere, and mm-hmm. somebody tapes him, and then they put it out to. He wasn't putting that out to the world. I'm sure he's working something out. I don't think anybody really. I, I would bet even Louis thought, oh, you know, it probably just came out of his mouth. Yeah. I, it, and it's it the, the proper reaction is yeah that's not funny yeah <laughs> right. yeah don't yeah. do it again yeah, yeah it's not a TMZ controversy my God I understand you well, know if it, you do that on the Tonight it's Show just, this is not a good joke well you do it on the Tonight Show you do it on a Saturday Night Live you do it you're doing careful, it on a Netflix special careful bang on the table with echo sorry but you know what I'm saying yeah, yeah. You, 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 if you're in a club somewhere trying out material and you, and you I don't know that to me is a different level of fuck up. Well, before smartphones, most... that wouldn't have gone out into the world. And like he watches old specials, there's some material in there that's like could go really wrong. But he's honed it for so for so long that well, when it comes to special, it's like it's good and it's funny and it gets the point across. If Matt says mongoloid <laughs> when you're on the Tonight Show, yeah. you're going to be in big trouble. Yeah, right. If you say it by mistake and it slips out because it, that's what things we used to say 20 years ago on your podcast. Again, it's it's where you say it and how you do it. And and look, I I love Louis comedy. I and this joke, I wa- I, I watched it while I was brushing my teeth last night and played it in front of my wife, and we both went, oh, oh, no. <laughs> but you know, having known Louis for a long time, like uh, that's Louis. He's he's he walks that line, and occasionally he crosses that line, and clearly he crossed it here. You just go, all right, well, don't don't do it again, but please. Save us the the, the yeah the not con- yeah not a great joke. No, it's a stupid joke, and yeah. it, and 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 he's probably not going to take it on stage and do it anywhere. You'll never hear of it again. Relax, everybody. Relax. Well, you know he's got a, he's already in a hole though, so he needs <clears> to <throat> probably. I think. Yeah, I think like a lot of people think, if he were more focused on what he's done and making comedy out of that, that would be a great place to start. But again, like Louis has never taken a single note that I've ever given him, <laughs> ever. <laughs> he, and, and, and I'm sure I could talk to a dozen other comedians who are going to say the same thing. Louis yeah. just, he's his own guy and he does his own thing. But yeah, I'll, you know, I know you and I both follow the, the Parkland kids on Twitter. Yeah, I think and there's, there's a some different really kind smart of, fucking kids in there. That's that a have... different world, though, that's not really meant for comedy. That, no. that little political fee that you and I are on, it yeah. doesn't. It doesn't handle comedy well unless it's comedy about this administration and what's going on in the world, unless it's done with a, a point of view that we all agree with, right? So a CK joke in the middle of that is, is you know, forget it. I'd probably agree with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't, I don't think that joke is going to go over well in that. No, way. anywhere. By but the also, way. those kids are pretty <clears throat> impressive. I love those guys. I think the kids are amazing. I think those kids are really impressive. Yeah, yeah. In general, I support those Parkland kids. If I mean, not I haven't given them any money, but I definitely fucking are they asking retweet? for money? No. I think they're some of the best tweeters out there. By yeah, the way. other <laughs> than you, um, Alexandra you... Ocasio Cortez, who is the best. She's tweeter another one. Now. She fucking smokes fools on Twitter. Like these they, old these old white exactly. guys can go up a fucking against a Puerto Rican New York bartender, please. <laughs> and these, <laughs> these don't stand a chance. The way they fight Laura Ingram and these other idiots, it's like how how are the Democrats not watching what these kids? Yeah. do and go this is how you handle that shit guys <laughs> mm-hmm. bill clinton used to do it very well he would just take it and just beat them over the head with their own stupid remarks and this uh, the, you know people now are just like yeah we'll let it go we won't yeah. say anything we'll take the high road no no you jerk you smash them on twitter <laughs> smash them with their own <laughs> stupidity how can you look at lindsey graham anything <laughs> he says and not make fun of what that yeah. is 
old Mildred Graham. <laughs> <laughs> you know, F- Flynn, who's the Simpsons character? It's uh, Fl- the the neighbor, Flanders. Oh, yeah. He's, he's a Flanders. Yeah. Can you imagine that guy on a battlefield <laughs> fighting what would happen to him? And he talks like a tough guy. <laughs> you just like, please shut up, you Russian hack. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway. Anyway. Let's talk so, cars. Yeah, let's get a fucking old Mercedes. What about that? We should do it. So plan C. We got Can you take me over to this guy's shop and we can go check absolutely, him out? Absolutely, yeah. Like I'm overdue. I, well, I was supposed to go look at this car. And and here's what you're going to like about it. Like, they they don't really do drivetrain stuff, so they're not really doing engines and transmissions. They buy the but cars. they're fixing them up, right? <clears throat> they're make, if you buy a car for a premium well, yeah, dollars, you're going to get into get that. It's mostly the interiors and the rest okay. of it. So you'll see, you know, in the back, they have, like, Mercedes emblems all lined up, but oh, in an order, yes. like Necco wafers in a yeah, package, yeah. like cookies and a little holder there. All their parts are lined up like that. It's, it's like the Lego set I just did. Yeah, like, it's like devastating. The Bugatti Chiron. I was I, impressed about that. But here's, you know, speaking of Twitter and social media, who is this guy that you guys are all clobbering, this idiot guy who's talking about Teslas will never need repairs in the future? Well, I, who, Who's uh, that guy? I, I almost don't think that guy was real. I, I blocked him. Alex Roy right. brought him to my attention. I saw it. and It was funny. Because the guy was a moron. But you think he's just trolling? He ha- he has to be. I mean, he has to. His statement was there was something to the effect of, it's nice that there are so many Teslas in the world because in the future they won't need repairs. Well, right? You'll have all of these Teslas that Elon Musk is built the stupidest, and they won't need repairs. It's the stupidest thing you've ever... <laughs> You could ever say. Was that the guy that also tweeted that uh, <laughs> people's poverty is mostly due to owning internal combustion cars? Yeah, I think so. That and was it's amazing. also the guy that said a, te- a Tesla never needs brake brake pads or brake <clears throat> rotors, and like the, the <clears throat> like Teslas are such nice cars. Yeah. they really are. And it, you have to credit Musk and and the engineers he's hired for building a really cool product and for forcing the legacy automakers to fucking get off their ass and start doing some mm-hmm. really interesting things as well. But the Tesla fanboys are lunatics. Yes. And completely detached oh, from reality. The fans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, the guy is. You attract what you yeah, are, no, right? Yeah, Elon's a lunatic as well. <laughs> but and the, the the fucking tunnel, please. The tunnel is so. Did you see the? There's an article on I NBC. So he someone someone wrote that really made me laugh. He's he's invented the subway in L.A. He has, but he's invent he's invented the subway <laughs> and also a fucking roller coaster because those wheels you put on the side of the stu- of the car are from old roller coaster technology can you imagine being lowered into the ground in los angeles where the ground shifts <laughs> can you, you imagine feel thinking that that's better <laughs> no so dumb. i thought about it last night as i was in a little traffic driving downtown but i was like there's no way i'm going underground in this fucking place <laughs> this place the first six or seven shaker the whole place is going down and just because it hasn't happened in a hundred years please the planet's five billion years yeah, old we're, no. we're due and i don't want to be underground in a musk tube or on his new flinger in the air whatever he's inventing next i, I want to be somewhere away from everything in the open or in my bomb shelter my nuclear fallout shelter <clears throat> i have yeah um, i know you've seen that guy who invented that metal ball survival ball right <laughs> yeah, i've seen the survival, that's really appealing the survival sphere i just want to get one just to sit in it at night and and I, wouldn't you feel so comfortable in that because sometimes can you see if you can get a picture of the the metal <laughs> survive the fallout shelter sphere survival I think, yeah ball. they call it a pod survival pot <laughs> yeah there it is oh it's just a ball i want to get in that every night just survival capsule yeah look what's at his that. website capsule.com survival dash capsule.com <laughs> doesn't that look comfortable honestly i would i just want to turn that into a meat smoker <laughs> look, he's, got, he's got he's got racing belts the, um, in it have you seen the emergency bed <laughs> No. The emergency bed is going to is amputate somebody's fingers uh, and hands. We can't watch because on YouTube. But, What's um, the emergency bed? It's a bed that, in the first sign of shaking, quickly sinks down and then metal top comes over yeah. the top. It, like, oh, it like drops into like a toy chest yeah. that's made of metal with like water and food Oh, so in it. it's a normal bed you sleep in, but then it becomes a safe. It becomes a safe. Off. Now, <laughs> if you're the type of person who jumps up when there's an earthquake, you're going to get decapitated <laughs> by the safety bed. That's, oh not, my that's God. not it. That's and then they it. could just bury your headless body in this metal. I like the metal. pod, though. The pod is good, but the, also, but my, my facility, Westside Collector Car Storage, is secure to a 12.0 earthquake. Wow. 
Well, I, I would trust the pod more than your facility. <laughs> no? You I, I want to put pods in my living room <laughs> Can we just and make watch them, like, TV fur- through that hole. Just make them furniture? No. This is just a place to feel safe when you feel afraid. You get in your pod, <laughs> you get in your pod and you maybe meditate. Is this the thing from Contact? It's like the sphere that they drop through the, the machine in Contact with the seats attached to yeah, it. Yeah, you can throw this shit in the ocean. You can throw it off a cliff. No, it's great. It, like, it says a hill. there's storage space it? for five days supply per person. Uh, what are the bathroom options when you're in there for day four? Bro. Yeah, you, know, you can't stand up. You poop in it for four it's days. It's a Matthew McConaughey uh, hole in the floor. <laughs> the hole in the floor of the van. <laughs> in the van with a little thing, right? It's perfect. Is it supposed to... Does it... It floats? It, it's... <clears throat> it looks like it floats, too. Like, I, does this survive nuke? Is that the thing? Is it nuclear resistant? I it would have to be. I don't know. Do you just stay that. strapped in that chair for five days? Yeah. Wow. Do you think we can get a press capsule? <laughs> <laughs> just trust their press office. We'll just tow it around in a little trailer. Just put training wheels on the fucking thing. <clears throat> I just want it for the weekend. I just want to use it for the weekend. I'll get, bring it back Monday. Without, no, but okay. Gas. So the, about the tunnels, I, there's jokes obviously everywhere. What? But I don't but, know enough about the tunnel to even comment. I all I saw was it was a is, Tesla down in the tunnel. That's right. not the plan, right? Th- that's the plan. The plan is to run Teslas and uh, quote other electric autonomous semi-autonomous vehicles through these tunnels at higher speeds. I thought it was to build a capsule, not unlike the survival well, capsule, to go down. The original plan put, was these sleds, <clears throat> and you'd right. put either seats or vehicles on the sleds and right. send the sleds through the tunnels. Yep. That part of it was abandoned. Okay. And so now they have these training wheels that go on uh, a car, <clears throat> and the car just drives through the tunnel. It's just going to be un- just five more minutes while we get the training wheels on this yeah. car. Eight <laughs> well, cars ahead of you. Hold on, hold the, on. The theory, that was the sled. I can't even get through the Bristol Farms cashier line <laughs> without a lady taking up 20 minutes writing a check, well, and this, you want me to wait for her to get her Tesla training wheels on and go in the tunnel? This seems so dumb. Well, it, it, this the, seems like these are the ideas my eight-year-old comes up with. Yeah. Like, guess what I invented, what Dad? What they're trying to say is that they're saying that the vehicles will have <laughs> permanent training wheels on them <laughs> that will either power deploy from under the car because of course they've never heard of ground clearance or that uh, uh, that will be permanently of, attached to the car Matt, think of the tunnel as we approach a tunnel as drivers right we're usually driving at yeah. a, right now imagine you know when they close the pch down they start waving one car in at a time what happens it's here in la 20 miles of yeah. destruction so what is the plan for that I don't know. The That's what's is- weird with the elevator. Like when when he first presented <laughs> the idea, I thought it was going to be a tunnel. You just drive down a slope. It's a tunnel underground for electric cars. Okay, it's basically adding a freeway or a road to LA because we we do need more like. But that doesn't here. work. I read a book called Traffic that studies traffic and used LA as an example. Adding more lanes does not reduce traffic, even if you add lanes vertically or underground or what. It doesn't matter. What does? That, uh, in, in, improving public transit. Mm-hmm. Public transit and getting people out of cars, period, is the only thing that improves traffic. So the scooters? I mean, I hate the scooters in a certain <laughs> way, but yeah, uh, actually, yes, <clears throat> it th- does. that does help. Okay. Uh, bike lanes uh, helps. Uh, a, tra- a transit system that doesn't use roads like a train right. helps. What about yeah. a really slow grain elevator that lowers <laughs> cars one at a time, <laughs> yeah. and then they drive for 50 miles at that, about 20 miles an hour? That does seems that like work? it helps six people and costs <laughs> $20 billion. <laughs> what about the Tesla any... drone system that picks your car? car up and then drops it where it is. Fuck, that. Oh, someone tested one of those in Dubai a couple months ago. It was, it was partnered with Audi and it was like, your self-driving car is a pod on wheels. It stopped in a place. They tested it like a, th- like a I don't know, three-quarter scale. Right. Drone picks the pod up off of the wheel, <clears throat> oh, flew it sounds... to another location, landed, and then dropped your, the pod on like another skateboard wheel thing really? and then it drove away. Yeah, it was weird. I mean, that's going to be great until we start having mid-air collisions. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I don't mean. I don't want to be the old guy who gets angry about uh, innovation, but yeah. some of this stuff doesn't make sense. No, yeah, the I thing agree. Is the, the some thing, of it. So, of, yeah. and, and enough smart people that I know. See, is that be, it? Holy shit! Look, look at, at that. that. <laughs> yeah, that won't take up any space. Jeez, I wonder how they came up with the idea for that. Imagine how That's loud just a drone that is. with a toy car. 
Imagine, you know how loud, uh, like a normal, like eight yeah. rotor commercial drone. I'll tell you is. what else about Imagine this. Imagine a drone that's got to pick, it's got to be as loud as a helicopter. As the drone sure, gets sure. bigger, yeah. we're going to see more decapitations too, because that's the part no one ever figures out. There's never any protectors around those blades. It's just yeah. like, oh yeah, and then there's nine razor sharp <laughs> blades always rotating near heads. But this, don't worry about that. That's not going to work. The things no. that work are improving public transportation and improving driver training. Yep. In Germany, they have traffic, but even when you have traffic, it it moves better because the drivers are just better. Mm-hmm. Jesus, they have like, lane discipline. They yeah. Have, yeah, lane discipline. It's just basic stuff. Yeah, yesterday basic stuff. The number of people driving slow in the left lane out to PCH, out to Malibu. Fuck, we just did. I just went to so San Diego angry. and back yesterday, and the the left lane was consistently the slowest moving yeah. lane. It drove me insane. And the right lane is the passing lane. Yeah, right? it's invert. We Where did we stop educating about people about this? What well, what happened? America. I think everyone thinks they're going as fast as possible, but they get, I think they get in the left lane they're and they're not. like, "I'm going <laughs> they're as spreading. fast as we should all go." They're and you're spreading like, Fuck out. You. I've seen it happen. They all get. They don't want to be too close to other cars, mm. so everybody just spreads out. Now I've got my own lane, like my own seat. And yeah, I'm, that's, and I'm that's doing, a good point. And yeah. I'm doing 71 yeah. in this left lane, not, and, they, and they don't know. They genuinely yeah. don't know. No one wants to be behind another car, even if they're both going the same speed. I'll tell you what other problem we have now is this new temporary license plate, paper plate that's starting in 2019. Oh, Did have you, you know that? It? I saw one on Facebook this morning. Are we going to have to start putting license plates <clears throat> on our cars? When you get a new car, <laughs> yeah, yes, unfortunately. When you get a new car, there's a temporary numbered plate now with some sort of uh, barcode that links it to you. Oh, which no. now does away with the dealer plate. Oh no! Which, as you know, <laughs> which, as you know, is I did three and a half years in my dealer plate I've, last time. I had, do not have a license plate on my Mercedes. <laughs> I bought it in April of 2016. <laughs> it's just easier that way. Hannah will return her Volvo <laughs> in February out of a 39 month lease, having never put a license plate on it. Only, by the way, for sport, for no other yeah, reason. For fun for sport. I know. Just to just to just prove to it can be get you can get away with it. <laughs> It's pretty good. Three and a half years is my is my record, but I think Corolla has Adam, one for four years. Yeah, Corolla he did four. Did four. He did. He did. He, I think it. he leased an Audi or something, yeah. and he did four on yeah. it. Yeah, and he's doing it also in a different part of L.A. where it's you know that's a lot harder to do. To it, and you know, it makes me happy that our police have real things to do, and yep. they don't spend time pulling people over who have these issues. Yep. But at the same time. No, that, there's no other side of it. It does make me happy. <laughs> yeah, well, think about that. I didn't get pulled over once in that blue GT3 for three and right. a half years. Yeah. No speeding tickets. Nothing. No infractions whatsoever. You're a law abiding. So also, I get the right to not put a license. And the car <laughs> and the car is registered. It's not like it's, you're driving it's an registered and insured. Vehicle. Of course, yeah. it's yeah. got all, I got all stickers in the same envelope in the front boot. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do that, officer. Well, let me do it right now. <laughs> got a, screw, you got a, a screwdriver? screwdriver. Put a I'll, screwdriver I'll, in. I'll handle it. I'll handle it. No problem. But yeah, have you seen one of the new tags yet? I did, yeah. You did? Yeah. It's just, you know, black and white. Simple. Is it a bar? It's a barcode? It's No, it's a white uh, card with black uh, numbers on it. And does it's it got show... little barcodes and little, you know, it looks primitive. But does it sh- is it the expiration date proudly shown? You know who you go to if you want to look at it? It's on uh, Dean Maroney's Facebook. Who the <laughs> fuck is that? Dean Maroney is a salesman at Beverly Hills Porsche. Oh. Um, so... In New York, you know where I where I uh, my my formative years when you would buy a new car, the temporary tag like this, it would be on the license plate, and it right. would be the whole almost the whole tag would be a big bold expiration date. Right, you could right. see when that thing expired from a hundred yards away. Right, and so that made it uh, almost impossible to uh, to do this no plate thing. You saw Ice T got pulled over for driving with no tags. He did, in, yeah, in New York on his, <clears throat> in his McLaren. I'm trying to think, I mean, if you're a law abiding citizen. What's the problem? Why should you have plates? <laughs> I don't run red lights. I don't run red light cameras. I mean, I'm not, I'm not committing crimes. We probably should have plates, Spike, but <laughs> we are just demonstrating the I holes do. in the system. Well, I do have plates on my dailies, like my Range Rover Sport. Uh-huh. I don't have a front yet. No, well, that's so that's <laughs> that and brings I like, up the other. So here's where here's where my argument is for the no plate. Right. Because if I, I'm not going to put a front plate on, period, okay. I'm just not. I don't have you been ticketed on. for that? I yes, have. I, have. I have. But if you run <clears throat> the dealer plate in the back, they don't look at the fucking front plate. They don't. 
You know what I mean? Right, the right. The fact that you don't have a front <clears throat> doesn't matter because you don't, don't have, have a the rear. little tag in the front in well, the windshield. In the windshield. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But now, but, if you know your salesman, you take that registration, you flip, flip it this way, <laughs> and then there's no information on the car that's what, how, visible. Of course, that's right, how the right. say, that's why you buy the salesman a coffee. <clears throat> yeah, and and <laughs> that works. But but if I only run the rear plate, then they're going to give me a ticket for no front plate. Right, which is annoying. Yeah. Well, one way around that, Lamborghini Countach. They ignore the no front plate no. Countach. It's really, the it's this side of the 405, you're pretty much okay. Culver, <laughs> where we are right now, is a little hard. They, they've got a, the police are very vigilant there. Yeah. And I've noticed in Beverly Hills, Hollywood area, yeah. and uh, but they don't, South they won't Beverly Hills area. They will pull you over area. for it. They'll do it while you're parked. I once. For no front plate? Yeah. Oh, really? <clears> oh, I've only really seen it as a parking ticket. Yeah, it was weird. I was like, really? <laughs> I'm not doing anything. He just, you know, he didn't like old white Porsches, I guess. Revenue collection, sir. Is that what it looks like there with the date on it? Or is that, <clears> just a, <throat> is that a number? No. It's this guy right here. Right here. It's not like that. Yeah, yeah. That's oh. that guy up here right there. Oh, there it is. Okay. Right? No, that's, a, that's not it. That's not it? That's not it. You didn't find it on the uh, Facebook page? I couldn't find Dean Maroney, Facebook Beverly Hills. They got a lot of weird <laughs> I deleted though. the Facebook app off my phone. You, how do you feel about that? Pretty good? And no, and yeah. I, I'm going to do the uh, regular page very soon. It, that was the first step, was getting it off my yeah. phone. I really, but now in moments like this, when I need it. When look. you need it. No, I don't have Facebook either, and I love it. Yeah. I really like not it's, having Facebook. Uh, I don't even know what it would be like to have Facebook. I like the idea that they were really letting everyone read my private <laughs> messages, <laughs> yeah. whatever company they Netflix wanted. Netflix and Amazon just got yeah, full I, access. I don't understand huh? that. Why is that okay? And why do we get to? Why do they get to keep lying about it over because, and over again? Because they, when you own the flow of information, Spike, you're going to get away with whatever the fuck you think you can get away with until someone physically stops well, you. Well, haven't mm -hmm. you noticed people fleeing? You know, I've noticed uh, a lot. Oh, less our traffic. Facebook as our the, even the smoking tire Facebook page, uh, which we're only keeping up just as a, I don't know, business or whatever. But like, uh, what two years ago, maybe. Two, two, between two and three years ago, it started to go down, right? It, it just tanked. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it right. properly exactly. tanked. Yeah, yeah. Well, so they, they started they started putting uh, posts in front of people that were only like paid promotions. They really yeah. focused the algorithm on that. Yeah. So if we didn't boost a post, it would just wouldn't be seen. You know, it was yep. a ninety percent drop in traffic. Yeah, but it's hard, you know. You feel like you're deleting all of these people from your hometown, the people you know you don't normally talk mm. to, but it's it's got to be done. You know what? I did that. This is the play. Oh, hold it up, hold that up your, to, the, uh, to the camera that faces you there, and then well, that's wait. Not wait Ooh, it's so bright. It uh, will, will it adjust? Uh, back up a little bit. There, oh, there you, go. you go. Stop. There you go. Oh, okay. So it's uh, it doesn't have a date. That's good. I like that very much. But it's got that oh, it's got the QR code. code yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, oh, so they can scan that. Yeah. And then it'll yeah. tell them when it should be uh, expired. Make money. Make money, money. I, I, I will. The lament. question is now: How far into 2019 <laughs> before I get pulled over in that GT2 wanna, RS with the Beverly Hills plate on it? You want to uh, fifty dollars <clears throat> bet? The first person to get a ticket with, uh, I'll continue running my. <laughs> My, yeah, my uh, yeah. Plate. I don't think I'm going to get a ticket. I think I I've either. got until 2020 in the GT2 uh, RS think, before they go. You know what? Right? I think nothing happens to either of us in 2019. All right, so, there you go. Yeah. First one to get ticketed, 50 bucks. Fifty dollars. The first one to get a ticket. Fair enough for a no plate. Yeah. So what else is uh, what else is in the <clears throat> garage in the the Plan Z garage right now? The car that we're waiting on is this uh, Zagato. Yeah, what's car. the story on this Zagato thing? Let me see. I thought I saw one for sale on Bring a Trailer. You Was did. that correct? You did. Did someone oh boy, buy that's one quite and a story. Someone bought and then flipped? <clears throat> Here, here's our car. So the story on that car. So they were making nine spiders and nine coupes. Uh huh. Okay. The spiders. Um, that, it's that one there on yeah, the left. Yeah, there it is. Zach, the, the spiders. Underworld auctions. There you That's go. That's a spider. Yeah. This is the spider. This was not offered to us. Um, and these cars were already built. And this car went off to Dubai. And the owner uh, promptly went bankrupt afterwards. I think they were <laughs> 400000 maybe five. I can't remember, depending on what they did to the car. <clears throat> so... I had noticed some uh, broker, some exotic car broker in Texas had imported the car and brought it there, Crave Auto or some stupidly named thing, you know, and, and knew there was going to be trouble with this. It, you know, Crave Auto seems to me, I, I don't know my opinion about them, it seems to be one of these weird, you know, fly-by-night places that gets a 4 GT, uh -huh. <laughs> suddenly didn't have the allocation, right, and right, it's selling right. it for twice the number. So they have this car. 
And then about a week ago, I, I check bring a trailer every morning. I see this car up there. And go, oh my God, who's the idiot that put a Zagato Speedster on bring a trailer? So no offense. fundamentally, what this is is a 356 Speedster rebodied <clears throat> by Zagato. Correct. Well, as no, this car I know less about. This car is modeled after uh, one real car that exists that Zagato made with Porsche, I believe. Yeah, I have to go back and look at the history of the car. But you know what Zagato does, right? Yeah, they're, they're coach builders. They're coach builders. So for for decades, they've taken Ferrari two fifties and put an aluminum body on them, mm. and get rid of the steel body, make them beautiful Italian creations, and, and they're, the they're one of a kind. GT and the DB four GT Zagato. These cars, Aston Martins, right? They, you know, as you look back at some of those cars, they're 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 worth you know four times the multiple of a normal DB4 right. you know GT. The so Zagato the, actually is even far more, depending on how beautiful they look. Some of their designs not so not so good, right? I would personally <laughs> argue this Speedster's a little weird looking. I agree. I think it's a little strange it's looking. Exactly. It's a little speed now there racer. was a there was a 550 that looked exactly like this. If you these photographs are terrible. By yes, the way. they are. If you. Hmm, what do you, uh, you to but this up? this became the issue on Bring a Trailer. So immediately I called uh, 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 a couple of guys I know who have these cars and said, you better get your asses on Bring a Trailer right now and explain to some of the dimmer among the Bring a Trailer fans what this car is because they didn't even know what Zagato was. They're saying, well, this they were thing saying was things like, publicized a, before. it's a kit car. Hey, someone put a kit car and a replica up there, and yeah. they don't—they didn't understand what Zagato was. So, if you read this thread, it's really a great education in what these cars are and why they're made and what Zagato means to the world, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This car eventually did not sell, but was bid up to two hundred and seventy-one thousand, mm -hmm. and it should never. It should either trade hands privately, or you would bring this up to Pebble and yeah. auction it at Gooding. Wrong, I, I, wrong just crowd. gooding right and you would market the car to people who know what it is and make sure it kind of stays in that type of collection bring a trailer sorry no i mean bring a trailer right is a good place for a lot of things but this is a car that <clears throat> not a lot of people knew about to I begin would, with yeah you could put i mean I, I bring a trailer i'd be fine seeing a 250 short wheelbase on bring a trailer right. it's just a zagato is a little it's a little bit nuanced and you know, it's funny. I, I got into it with a few guys there, too. It's just like, you know, you're always going to be explaining to, to people what this car is. I'm like, yeah, that's what every car I drive, I'm explaining. what it, This is a GT2 RS. What is the wing for? Well, here's what it does. That's part of the fun. Yeah. But this is, you know, admittedly. So, so Zagato now is saying uh, they're building nine of these spiders, nine of the coupes. Here's, here's our coupe right here. On a, right? Can so you that, get a picture of a completed coupe, Zach? Is there a 356 Zagato coupe we can get a picture of? It's I, the coupe. I can't. The, yeah, these are the actually. The picture Spike is holding up makes the coupe look way fucking better than the speed. It is. There I, it is. Right? Isn't that close yeah. enough? It's not your Rob, actual Rob car, Report. but. No. But that. If you look up Rob Report has. Yeah, this is the story on the Zagato right there. Okay. You so can go coupe, right into the whole story of Zagato, right? The coupe looks way better than the Spider. <laughs> way better. That's. It actually is more sleek than that, and the roof line is down lower. I can't. I just realized I can't show you the pictures. They're embargoed, the ones I have on my phone. I mean, I can show you, but you no, can't. Yeah. We can't put them so up there. The, these look like but they're renderings. Yeah, it, it this, does. This the picture the Spike right has. There. It is basically the same, but the roof is a little lower and a little more raked back windshield. Basically. It's, right. And in the late pretty. 50s, Zagato and Porsche were going to build this car, and these plans sat at Zagato until now. And and um, instead, I, th I believe Porsche made the A-Bar uh, Carrera. Did you have to and send Zagato, them a 356? Zagato reached out to me and said, would you like to buy one of these? We're, we're only going to sell two in the United States. Ben Clymer has the other one. The rest oh, really? are being sold around the world. That's the A-Barth. Ben Clymer yeah, got the other one? He's got another one. Jesus, I didn't so there realize are two in the US. he was doing that well. I believe there's one spider here in the U.S. I believe Afrin from Petrolicious oh, has the spider. You mean? Afshin, yeah. Yeah. Afrin's a nose spray, right? Afrin is a nose spray, mm, okay. yeah. yeah well, one of the, 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 the one that does the bad is, is Ohio. Is Hodinky really doing that well that Ben Clymer yeah, got one? they're cleaning up. Jesus Christ. Straps. He's it's all the, straps, he's ladies and gentlemen. the owner of Hodinky, by the way. So, you know that. And we've been building this car, I think, for a couple of years. And yeah, it started with a 356 that you they sent sourced. Them or that they no, found, they, okay. they found it in Italy. It was a 60 matching number engine. The rest of it was shit. And, and you know, we've rebuilt the engine. They took the steel body off. They put this beautiful aluminum body on it. And it's a gorgeous creation. Now, I, I went to Milan in June and toured the facility and saw them building, I think, the car before Ben's. And, you, you know, I sat in the theater. 
they have this little presentation they do that the Porsche executive sat and listened to and okayed this whole thing. This is a Porsche sanctioned project where they said, we'll let you use the Porsche badge. And, uh, you know, there it is. I mean, they, I, I don't know what else to say, but it's going to be, you know, one of nine. And Pretty cool. Something that nobody else has. And, you know, maybe for the next five years you might go, well, it's too fresh, it's too new. But it, it, history will look back at the car as a, as a moment car, you know? It's and cool. it, It'll be a beautiful thing to own and to drive. You know, we're going to, I think I'm going to go to Milan in January or February and, uh, because it's supposed to be done first week of February and drive it a little bit. Can yeah? Can you gonna do a little European tour with it? Uh, no, I was just gonna drive it to to get it right. I wasn't gonna do a long drive. I was just gonna drive it, bring it back, drive would, it, bring I'd it have back. To go over the mountains. It's in it. winter, so <laughs> <laughs> this car is not ready for that. This car, I want to just go there for a couple of days and give them some notes before I bring it back, and then most likely it'll end up at Wilhoit, John Wilhoit's place down in Long Beach for uh, final sorting and then Zuckerman and I will do our thing and then it, it should be perfection. Nice. The only part of it that Zuckerman doesn't really know about and has no awareness of are the Zagato seats. What about them? He's not going to fit in them. <laughs> 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 which again is the great for the plan Z this, first. Uh, Here, look at it right there. See those, those, oh, little, those lumbars. Yeah, those side oh, those bolsters. Both side bolsters. Yeah, yes. those are a little, those <clears throat> seem very now, those are fixed. deco. <laughs> That's going to guarantee that I put the most amount of wheel time in this car right there. Cause Zuckerman, Should it uh, drive just like a regular 356, basically? Yeah. yeah. Except it's going to go faster because it's it's lighter. Is the body aluminum? Yeah. How that's much less does it weigh than a regular? I, I, that's what there. we want. That's what I want to find out. They took wow. the whole body off it and put a new brand new uh, Zagato builds that aluminum body and puts it right back on. Yeah, probably a couple hundred pounds at least. Yeah. I bet uh, that's which, awesome. you know, for Are a little car like that. juicing up the motor a bit, or is it a nope. completely stock engine? You know, they said we could, but they recommended that we didn't, because um, we talked about a four cam engine and some other stuff, and they said, you know what, you don't need it. It's just, it'll throw the car out of balance. You know, you know these old yeah, cars, yeah. they're already light to begin with, and now that you're taking all that steel off it, it's going to be even lighter, and you know, I, I, I like balance in an old car, and I, I didn't want it to be nuts. Uh, it looks cool. I'm stoked. So, you know, maybe. I don't know. Maybe we'll have John Wilhoit throw something crazy in there. I Who look knows? forward to uh, seeing it at Bill's. Yeah. It's going to be beautiful. Uh, we got a bunch of questions, <clears throat> and you got a hard out at one thirty, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going BMX bike oh, ride. Are? Good. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. Let's, let's punch in on I these questions. About that. We'll get to as many as we can. All uh, right. We, uh, if we don't finish them by one thirty, I apologize uh, if you, but we'll cut off Super Chat right now. Uh, because we definitely need to be done for one thirty for Spike. What are those money things? That's how much people have donated to us to ask these questions, Spike. Really? Yeah. Someone has Not to pay just for today. these Tosh bills. Yeah, today. All right. Like between this morning and now. <gasps> uh, can you see that? The position fine? Yeah, huh? I can position see that. One? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Toon Squad says, thoughts on the 992 Sport Design Package. Uh, it breaks up those black horizontal grills making it less boxy and wide i haven't seen the sport design package what is that yeah i, don't I haven't know. seen it Zach, either can you find us a picture of i what are your thoughts on the 992 styling period like, i don't like it don't love it i don't like it right no i don't like, I don't like the either. terminator back i like the front I, a little bit i don't like the back a lot i don't like the stubby razor shaver in the middle there's a lot about this car i don't get yet and i know that changes and, and uh can you scroll down zach or no won't let you oh well, the, so all right so it. the rear yeah the rear no, does no look problem. better with this sport design package because you don't have that bar going all the way across the bottom which makes it look fat yeah well, or if it's there it's black Instead yeah. of body, like That's this is a, a silver. Better. Can you pull this picture over, Zach? Uh, this silver color car that we're looking at here, if it had the normal ass, it would have a silver bar on the bottom, right? Giving it like this low <clears throat> fat bum. Whereas, if with that package, it seems to make it black and sort of hide it a bit. Yeah, top left picture. See that that silver ooh, bar across ooh, the yeah, bottom? Yeah. That's not good. That's well, a that, bad my look. guess is that package is the new nine eleven. 
<laughs> it's just going to be <laughs> on all, all the cars. They're all just going to get yeah, them Yeah, like there this. was a pretty strong reaction by a lot of people, including myself, that this does not look right. It looks too modern and too yeah. it, too odd. You know, and I'm sure it's going to drive great, and I like the performance stats on it, but the, the, the interior shifter, like today, I'm driving the GT2 RS, and, and people say, well, why aren't you using the paddle shifters? I like to shift with my little shifter sometimes. Oh, you like to use a and lever? I'm not gonna, yeah, I'm not going to do... I'm not going to do this. I don't want to do that with a little shaver. I didn't know you were a lever shifter. I am. Oh, yeah. How about that? I like a lever sometimes, but I, I typically use more paddles, but I see it's where you're fun. coming from. It's fun. It feels yeah, like, like a rally track. car. A yeah. bit like a rally car. But yes. I don't like that, that strip across the bottom of body no. color. I don't like it all. The back of the car is hideous. Look. Yeah. And the, and, the, and the light in the middle of the back grill there. Forget about no, it. No, the front oh, is yeah. The exhaust the pipes are too close to the license plate. They're too far in. Please do over. <laughs> I think the front is the front is good uh, on and the front's beautiful, design, but the back is losing. The me. stats are great, yeah. and I'm sure it's going to be an awesome car. It's just let's finish it. All right. Well, the sport design I think does improve it. Yes. Though. Good call, Tune Squad. Full Octane Garage says my favorite Porsche podcast peeps together again. <laughs> Happy New Year to Zuckerman. All right. Happy New Year to Zuckerman indeed. The Korean Escapist says I recently bought an Omega Speedmaster. Mm -hmm. uh, 35. I don't know what the reference number is. Whatever. Speedmaster. My first <clears throat> real watch. Where should I go from here for my next watch? Also, should I get a new Volkswagen Polo <laughs> or a used Golf GTI? Um, I would say probably a used GTI, although the Polo, I've never driven, never driven one. Yeah. The Polo is a, a smaller Golf. Yeah. I've never actually driven one, so I, I can't. He's not talking about a shirt? I thought he was <laughs> watching a Polo shirt. <laughs> no? That's where he's a good place to go. No, That's Volkswagen. where I would go. All right, if your first your first real watch is a Speedmaster Spike, where do you go next? That's a really good question, He's because he's bought the perfect first watch. I was going to punt it to you and say I'm not, I'm not really sure where to go with I, that one I would say something that is good at water well how about how about vintage or go vintage how about you know he's not right for the unimatic brand that I like but I would yeah I would say why don't you go start looking at a vintage Tudor or a vintage Rolex Submariner and that's, so you'll have something new say. and something old I would say a Rolex Submariner from the 80s or 90s mm -hmm. is where I would probably start but shouldn't he get something old He's got something new. Yeah, or something. Don't you like to yeah, go 80s new, or and 90s. Old, new and old? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, unless you're a klutz, then I would <clears> stick with the new stuff because it's a little more durable. And get a nice pink polo, an Izod polo <laughs> also, to wear. Also that's, get that's, a shirt. <laughs> shirt. Miguel Flores <laughs> says, have you ever used an OBD scan tool that connects to your phone to show you real-time stats like trans temps and mass airflow? I've been using one, and it's super neat. Yes, I have. Uh, I forget what brand it was, but I did an ad for one, and I used it for a little bit. It was all right. I, I bought one. I haven't plugged it in yet, but uh, it... After using my peak reader, which is like the old BMW one, yeah. a lot of people are, are like, got one of these. You you can get a variety of uh, of them on eBay for either uh, Android or iPhone, yeah. and then they work over Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and it gives you way more information than like an old plug-in thing. Yeah, and if you do track days and you mount your phone mm -hmm. in your dash, you get a bunch of extra gauges. When I went to Global Time Attack, uh, to, to a lot of the race cars that are based on just street cars, instead of having <laughs> a bunch of permanently installed gauges, will have a, like an actual iPad on their dash with a full display uh, and, a, and an OBD tool. Yeah, I mean, if you, if you want gauges and you have your phone mounted on your dash, I think it's a good thing to use. I, I have no allegiance to any brand. Um, Seems much easier than you know running wires to yeah. four individual gauges or something. Yeah, totally. Uh, thanks, Miguel. Barry says Zuckerman is a treasure. Thanks for giving him a mic. I completely agree. <laughs> yeah, we got to get Carl Ruiz and Zuckerman on the same show together. That would be amazing. Uh, do Spike and friends <clears throat> usually buy the new Gen 911 right away or wait? No, we wait for the special cars. I hear that new GT3. I've heard a couple. When was of the people last time you bought a new like Carrera? Ever? Um, ninety eight C two S. Okay, yeah, in ninety eight. Yeah, so a, a, so an air a air cooled car was the air, last, last of the air cooled. Actually, C two S is a pretty nice car. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I might like to have one of those the daily. What was your first nine eleven? Seventy four nine eleven CP Brown tan interior. All right, two hundred thousand miles. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Barry. Tune says people always ask for the best investment cars, but how about the worst? What is the car that will lose the most value the quickest? Mercedes, Mercedes brand new AMG. AMGs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. An Jaguars. AMG, an AMG SL, an AMG S Class <clears throat> Coupe. Um, yeah, if you think about numbers. You got to think about how many of these cars they made. And if they made a ton of them run, 
run away. <laughs> They're nice cars to drive. They are. The new AMG car is fantastic. Yeah. Buy them um, pre-owned and you'll be happy. Yeah, you buy a, th- dude, a three-year-old S63 coupe is the shit. How many for 60 grand. How many AMG GTs do they make? Do they make a ton of those? Those or? aren't as bad because they haven't made as many and um and and uh they are a dedicated platform. Mm-hmm. The SLS was the same thing. Like the, that that car is the depreciation's not as bad. Now it's bad, but it's not as bad. Mm-hmm. But an S-Class AMG Fucking forget it. They <laughs> drop like rocks. What's I mean, that four door AMG GT thing they're making? That yeah, thing well, looks it's the AMG GT sedan, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is not a whole lot different from a CLS. <laughs> CLS. Remember that, <laughs> that, that, that uh, E55 wagon that went up for sale recently? Yeah. And someone said that three years after it came out, they were selling for 37 grand. Mm-hmm. And they, what was that new? 88, something around there? Yeah, it was 80 or 85 I mean, that's, grand. That's yeah. a 60% drop mm, in yeah. three years. But you know what? They kind of level, they level off at a point. So it, once it hits like four years old for an AMG, mm-hmm. they really. Le- so the sweet spot is to buy one like four years old, and then you you lose very little after. Right. That. Yeah. There you go. Uh, Jason Masajewski, Macy Juski, Macy Juski, whatever, just picked up a 2013 BMW M5 for thirty six thousand dollars. I think that's fucking great. Non competition though. After watching your review, is there a better bargain for a daily driver right now? It was 110 grand new and only had 35,000 miles. Wow, that is that is quite a bit of depreciation, Jason. That's the F10 M5. That's the twin turbo V8. Divorce sale. I think it would be uh man, that's a lot of car for mm-hmm. 36,000 bucks, isn't I it? I like the way these look, too. These are those are nice cars and they are fast. Is there a better value than that? Mm. They sound like nothing, but you put exhaust on it, and then it sounds like anger. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if in, in, <laughs> in sedans, you know, the, I, I would say the, the AMG E55s are on this. Uh, your E63 is in the same sort of ballpark as that. Uh, Corvette Z06s. You know, of the of the 2013 era, for uh, 40 grand or a ton of money. I mean, but I think Jason did very very well. 36 grand That's for amazing. a 2013 M5 is awesome until that breaks. Like new Sonata or a 2013 M5? I mean, it's got that fast dual clutch it's got gearbox. Got a good dual clutch. That's a fucking Did 167 car. miles an hour, I that's think. A, that's we, had a, the, we had the competition one, but it's still. That's a really good cool. car. Good for you, Jason. Jeremiah says, first time, long time. Thanks for the recommendation. Four years ago, I bought a 2010 Honda Fit manual gearbox and I'm still so love it to get love it to death oh dude fits are not bad if here's mm-hmm. what you do with that fit you call a company called i believe it's called total chassis solutions tcs um they're uh, s- sort of on the east coast i think maybe nashville area can you look up where they're at seamus uh and tommy they race these things to- is it there we go that's one of jack's articles on it tcs and oh tailored chassis solutions i'm sorry that's it tailored chassis solutions they do these k24 swaps in these cars uh they swap the 2.4 liter engine into the fit <laughs> these cars are crazy fast <laughs> they, they don't weigh anything they're like 2300 pounds you get the na power is that right T- Taylor? is that right did i get that right go back the go, the the K swap Honda Fit, the, go down, go down, 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 down. That click on that. It's whatever company that is. TCS is it tailored, or Total Chassis Solutions? Boy, that doesn't look right. Tailored. Taylor, okay, Taylor yeah. Chassis Solutions. That car is really really fast and bulletproof, reliable, and they can mm-hmm. do these swaps for like six grand, and everything will work. The gauges and the air conditioning, all that stuff, and. When that dude is tired of his fit and wants to make it insanely fast, that's who you call. Who do you think, worse than the Uber drivers are the uh, fit drivers here in L.A.? (laughs) No, Prius. Not this guy. You know, Prius is the worst. It's also just a first car for a lot of people. I've noticed a lot of really dangerous fit drivers. We can do that other one. We haven't banned him permanently. Who? Oh, I didn't mean to skip him. Oh, yeah. That was totally an accident. Uh, MB is Frenchy with a new one. Opinion on switching from a 2013 Bentley GT Speed to a Panamera Turbo until the next V8 Continental come out. The GT Speed just doesn't sound very good. That's correct. And the current V8 is slow. The Panamera Turbos are lovely. Mm-hmm. I like the wagons. My they friend sound o- great. Spike's frowning. What's with the frown on the, on the Panamera Turbo, <clears throat> Spike? No, I like that car a lot. Have you driven the the Turbo S E hybrid? 
I have. I'm I'm in love with it. Yeah, Sebastian Maniscalco just bought one. Oh, my really? recommendation. Wow, he must yeah, be yeah. doing very well. He's very happy. Yeah, <laughs> he's, for him. he's I think he sold out Madison Square Garden four nights in a row. Wow. <laughs> could have kept you, going. That's a good so, way to yeah, get one. He's doing well. Get this. A friend of mine, good friend of mine owns a Porsche store in New Jersey. Uh and uh Town he, Town the, Motors. The crap and, huh? or the cars? What? Like, the crap or the cars? The cars, a dealership. Oh, he owns okay. a dealership. Town Motors in Englewood, New Jersey. Yep. And he says they can't sell the wagons for nothing. That's true. He said no one wants the wagons. Everyone wants the regular ones. Really? Right. Yeah. The wagon, I don't I get it. Looks, why don't, better why aren't the people wagon? buying the Sport Turismo? Because we're cool. Right? And and the people don't get it. They don't understand. <laughs> they still don't get it. <laughs> they don't understand that that's the coolest car Porsche makes and sells. I don't understand why they don't I'm just amazed. think it looks better aesthetically. Yeah. I just think it looks better. Is it just is that how deep the wagon stigma goes? Is like this I is think, better looking, I but so. I still won't do it. Isn't that always been the problem with wagons in the United States? Yeah, so? absolutely. That we we all like them, but we're in the minority here. It's weird. It's really I, surprising. I say e hybrid turbo sport turismo. In chalk, yeah, hell, I know somebody yeah. who has that. It's the most beautiful creation in the world. It looks great. I saw yeah. it in the press launch. It was like, whoa, yeah, that's hot. Throw a surfboard on it, you can do so anything. So hot. Oh, who's sir, is it? Matt Jacobson? Is that yeah, his guy? Yeah, that's right. That sounds like a Matt Jacobson car. Yeah. Uh, you see his new tropical dial, mm, boy. No, Matt Jacobson, he's got great stuff. He's got the tropical dial Rolex <clears throat> game tight. Yeah. His yeah, dials yeah. are all He's playing brown. at a different level than we are. Yes, I say get the Panamera Turbo S E Hybrid in Sport Turismo. Jack says my 2011 Jetta needs some jazzing up. I need tires that won't kill my budget, have decent performance, and work well in rain. Do I hashtag just get the Michelins? Yes, you do, sir. The Michelin Pilot Sport 4S. They are more expensive than other tires, but they last a really long time. They have great performance. They ride well. They're quiet, and they're really good in the wet. Uh, and Sam Smith, to add to your recommendation, said that uh, like the, his experience with the Contis is when they heat cycle a lot of times, especially mm -hmm. if you street drive them, their mm -hmm. their traction changes. Like they get harder and harder and harder, and that's something the Michelins don't do. Mm. I think the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S is the best tire, not just by a little bit, by like a lot. Um, and and so, I don't know how much they cost for a 2011 Jetta. I can't imagine they're that much because in a normal size, they're just they're, probably a 15 inch wheel or 16 inch wheel. Yeah, I mean, I can't imagine they're that expensive, but I say just get them. Yeah, David D mm. says goals or resolutions for 2019 parentheses the money the money. That's a Zuckerman any, remark. Anything right you want to do in 2019? <laughs> Me? Like yeah? No, I have not thought about it at all. <laughs> I don't think that way. I don't think about these things. I don't either. And I, you know, the other day I was thinking maybe I should set some new goals for myself. Yeah. But I, what would that be? I don't know. You're getting married. You have some married. legitimate goals I'm for 2019. I'm finishing a building. I'd you're, like to you're fill working it with out cars. all the time. You're taking care of yourself. Trying. You're not, a man. Not. You're a man with direction in 2019. <laughs> I'm not. I'm falling apart. Your direction is south. Yeah, the couch. No, my pod. My escape pod. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I want you to build me. Get Elon a, Musk, if you're listening, build me a giant pod pod cannon and i'm gonna get in my pod and just fire me anywhere uh, fire me anywhere i'll be happy oh man enough ray b says from minnesota i drove my 2014 mustang to california four thousand miles i don't think that's four thousand miles uh maybe round trip <laughs> cortex racing bits for handling no motor mods uh, okay yep yeah he, he oh oh he's He's doing a road trip and looking for recommendations. I didn't read the context. I'm sorry. Oh, he's in San Fran. He's in San Fran right going now. Going to Washington. To Washington, then east to Minnesota. Things to do, roads, seating fuse, thoughts. So if you're going east from San Francisco and then north, or going north to Washington and east to Minnesota, I don't have any specific activities for you because I haven't spent a lot of time up there doing things besides I don't skiing. like that question. I, I get a lot of those. Hey, I'm coming to L.A. What should I do? Do I look like a tour guide well, to you? A, in L.A. I'd have some <laughs> things, but up in driving across Washington and Montana, it's we just drove the, dirt scenery, the, whole time, the yeah. scenery is just amazing. Find I would say find a curvy road that goes through a national forest, because when I drove across Oregon this year, uh, we just that's that we were going across the forest, and it happened to be an amazing road with great curves and good tarmac, and I was like, wow, I wish I was in a sports car right now. Yeah. 
wasn't yeah. a nomad, but still, just pick coming curvy and drive across it. Yeah, I, I would say pull up your Google Maps and look for the squigglies and Google. take them. Google this. I mean, I, stop you, typing. T- listen, stop sending questions like this to Matt Farah, please. Listen, I appreciate the donation. I really do. We're I'm happy. Oh, to, that's I'm a nice one. one. Yeah, yeah, I know I'm you're being nice to him if, because of the money. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm going, Jimmy, dear I'm, Jimmy Fallon. I'm, I'm coming to New York. What should I do while I'm there? I'm happy to help. The with, Statue of I, Liberty, you say? How would I've heard about this? <laughs> oh my God! Hold on. I'm I'm messaging the Today Show. <laughs> <laughs> now, on my second day, what play should I see today, show? What roads should I drive? Point Which to- Holiday Inn is better, Manhattan <laughs> or Soho? <laughs> Dear President Trump, I'm on my way to Washington. Point he three. What, to that. what airline should I travel on? And what food should I eat while I'm there? <laughs> Hello? Why aren't you responding? Uh, good point, Spike. $14. Okay. Yeah. That's, I'm making fun of For $14, I'm making fun of you. There I'm you go. sorry. Adam I, I says, love you. I You're wanna, great. Adam says, I want to buy a Lotus <laughs> Esprit in 2019. Please talk lots of shit. I mean, they're genuinely not good cars, so you wouldn't be lying. But- not a lot of people have them. Yeah, they and look cool. They look cool. are cool. If you yeah. can get it working right. Yeah. Just don't overpay for it. Is yeah. this Travis Sikulski, by the way? <laughs> no? Doesn't he, isn't that the car he wants? I, I wouldn't be surprised. That yeah. sounds right. The, look, the Lotus is a neat looking car mm-hmm. that if you show up at any car show anywhere in America, you'll people will be like, oh, that's cool. That's, you know, they're reasonably comfortable if you're small. They are reasonably quick if you get the turbo one or the V8 one. They drive a little weird. They drive a little different than other cars. Um, and if you get them sorted, you can drive them all right. They're not total shit. They're just a little weird. And if it, But if you think you might like it, you probably will. If right. You're, you know who likes them? Uh, you know who's good? Um, James at, Sharks, at Shark Works has one that he loves. If you're in San Francisco, talk to him. He, is he that where those run. guys are? Yeah, Sharkworks is in uh, Fremont, where Tesla is. And uh, they are Lotus enthusiasts on and, and wow. top of being Porsche people. And I think they're it's not a cool like, choice. They're not terrible. They just drive a little weird. Yeah, well, why don't you drive it first, and then you tell us. Turo. Yeah. Find one on Turo. Yeah, get one on Turo. I think someone's really got an Esprit time. on Turo? Depending on what city you're in, I, uh, I'll bet. An Esprit? An Elise, maybe. I don't know, I don't know about an Esprit. True. Uh, Nithin says, a best starting point for a 911. I have a 150K budget. I want modern, mm. fast, and scared in an air cool. Oh, wait. I want modern, fast, and scared, and an air cooled car won't feel quick enough for my first 911. I can always go there. So, where do you spend 150 grand on a fast, modern, water cooled <clears throat> 911? Why not a 991? Why wouldn't we find a 991 turbo that's depreciated into that zone? That would be Something very fast. New. Yeah. yeah. A 991 Turbo S could easily be yeah. your fast. You think you could mo- get that for 150 right now? The Turbo S is an incredible car. Yeah, I think an earlier mm-hmm. an earlier 991, like a 2015. Because we had something that was stickered like 186 new. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think you yes. could. You'll be so happy. Yeah. You'll never I'll, get another car. Yeah, Dude, that's kind of true. And then just get a little tune on that thing. Woo, boy. Don't Once you that. get used to the speed, yeah. in two tune. years, yeah. then get a tune. Yeah. <laughs> top speed, Don't safari it. Top speed Don't. makes like two, <laughs> like it's like intercoolers, pipes, exhaust, tune, and it's like 700 horsepower in that thing. Amazing. Animal. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. For a Turbo S, there's, you can do all kind of shit with, uh, with, with not much extra cash. How incredible is it that this GT2 RS is getting 0 to 60 at 2.6 seconds, it's and it's rear, all it's rear, rear wheel, wheel drive? drive. <laughs> yeah. It makes no sense, yeah, right? Yeah, it's crazy. Crazy. I still have to drive that thing. No. <laughs> Listen, I'll have if, to you're ask Mo- my ten if you're letting Moise fucking That's leave true. groceries, yes, in. you are a, a much more skilled driver <laughs> than he is. And then Nathan follows it up with Spike. What is the <clears> first 911 you ordered, brand new? It was that 98 C2S. It was the first one I could afford, and the first one that I ordered, 1998. Oh, and then he follows up again with the 911 he wants. He wants it to be manual. So that eliminates the Turbo S, which is all PDK. He could get a GTS, 991 GTS, <coughs> mm-hmm. which is, I wouldn't call it scary fast, but, oh, no, no, he's not scary fast. He said he's scared and air-cooled won't feel cool. Okay, the 991 GTS manual is a very fast car, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. I think they they are lovely. 150 grand buys you the best one in the world. They can handle track work, too, right? Oh, they have like a diff yeah. and cooler yeah, and brakes yeah, and all that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. They're, and, and they're fantastic packages and also can be tuned up to over 500 horsepower very, very easily, and they're lovely. 
So that's what I would say a GTS or if you, you know, if you need that whale, can you get a 991? No, you can't. No 991 GT3 in manual. What's the fastest no, you uh, need a 997 RS. Well, the Turing, yeah, but No, yeah, I won't you can't get that for 150. Not right not now. Not yet. Not right now. Uh let's see. The RPM Journal says prior <laughs> 9 Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ray says Spike are Porsche 997s really worth the premium over 996s in an apples to apples comparison. I say yes. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it, the, the simplest way to think about it is to think about what the Porsche community at large values. So on the way out of this car, you know there's a market to sell it. And we value the 997 over the 996. If you can't afford the 997, you would definitely go for the 996. And then the special cars always are the ones you start with. So yes, GT3s over turbos. But again, it's personal choices. Zach, go to the wide. I feel awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you feel? What do you mean? Because you were answering the question, and it was just a shot of me sitting there. I prefer there. I to look felt, at you. I don't want to look at I me. I just felt awkward. I'm just going to pull my hat down. <laughs> my big strike. I agree head. with what Spike said there. The RPM Journal <laughs> says, I owned a 944 and a 993. Uh, I'm on mm -hmm. a budget looking for a 997 Carrera Ooh. 2S. C2S. Yeah. That's the car. There is a uh, fifteen to 20000 U.S. price difference between a 997 one and a 997 two here in New Zealand. Is the extra money worth it to get a 997 two, a DFI <clears throat> engine car? Y yeah. I, I, Porsche is a company that makes it better every year. So, yeah, the later cars are always tend to be the better cars is the general rule. So point twos, better than point ones, unless I you're mean, getting into older stuff and you want the first. So the point one is going to have so we, like, the IMS issue still, which the point twos don't have. That was on the nine nine six though. No sevens on the sevens too. Yeah, the early sevens. Yeah, oh five oh six. Yeah. Yeah. So if you know, if well, that's worth it right there because fifteen grand difference, but that's how much it costs to fix that, right? You, I don't think it's breaks. that much. Okay. It's like if you have to do a clutch and and that kind of stuff going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> if it's going to happen. I think it is I think the DFI motor is a better engine mm -hmm. and I think there's other features that you get with the two that are that make it worthwhile and I think you'd get a bunch of that difference back when you went to sell it. Mm -hmm. I think the difference that difference will always be there. That gap <clears throat> is not shrinking. Um, yeah, what about color? What about stats here? What about mileage? Are there any other thing? There are a lot of other things to consider here with that price difference. You know, yeah. we need more information here. Uh, all right, thank you. Do, do either of us have any public transit horror stories? <laughs> I, I had a quick... I was in New York for a meeting, and I was walking on the subway with JF, and I just noticed the subway was empty and the other ones were full, and somehow I remembered hearing this from someone that, like, if that's the case, you just know that either someone's taking a shit in there or it, it smells terrible, and we look in, and there's a homeless guy sleeping. It smelled terrible. We walked right out and got into, like, the crowded yeah. car. Yeah. yeah. That's just riding the subway in New York. Yeah. Was he, were you with me when the guy the guy wielding the pipe went to the movie downtown? Oh yeah, yeah. When Z, when uh, yeah. me and Zach took the L.A. Uh, the Santa Monica to downtown line to go see. Oh the um, um chips the, chips yeah, and there was a guy like on on you some went PCP to see chips? yeah. yeah. We, uh, Dax invited us. It was great, and uh, this um, this guy was wielding a pipe. And like no shirt on, <laughs> pacing back here? and forth and screaming, yeah. Yeah. yeah, like high on PCP or something. It was pretty fucking creepy. That's just yeah, riding the subway. It was, it was very, it was a little more extreme than your typical riding the subway. I've seen guys shoot. I remember in New York uh, on a Monday morning going to work, and there's a guy sitting across from me just shooting up, and people going, "You shouldn't do that here." And the lady goes, "You shouldn't do that here." And he goes, "Fuck it, lady. I just found out I got AIDS." And I'm like, "Oh, wow. wow this is Monday morning. This is Monday morning." Wow. And you just look down, and it's all fine. You Not for him. Pretend you just didn't hear that he just told you about his AIDS status. Jesus. With an exposed needle. stabbed her with the AIDS needle. Yeah. yeah. There's a good feed. Everyone, I keep seeing it pop up uh, on Instagram of things that happen on the New York subway. It's, I it's, bet that's a great it's account. It's delightful. Yeah. It's delightful. Uh, James, thank you for your donation. Uh, and the, oh, the vet, I don't know what, 
I don't know what he uh, MB is French. He's referring to some some auction on Bring a Trailer that I didn't see. I have nothing there. Sorry. The bat Vanquish Zagato. Vanquish Zagato. Was there another Zagato up there? Well, there's a modern Vanquish Zagato. Yeah. So I, yeah. Don't, I don't know if one is for sale. I, didn't I did. See it. You know, you're right. Things. I did see that, but um, I don't you know, know what, again, that's I that's one of those cars where you kind of look at it and you go, mm, maybe not the best work Zagato's done. I kind of like the Vanquish Zagato yeah. actually. I think it's cool. Did you see the the Zagato like shooting break? Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. I think that's cool. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, it's like Milan. There's a lot of cool design going on. Yeah, there. I don't think they're all winners though. Not everyone. No, no. no. Uh, Dan has a vote for just you and Z talking about cars on Didn't your show. Danny O'Keefe. Dan O'Keefe. For what? Just he wants just more shows. <clears throat> with See, just I you told you. All right, yeah, Dan, we're gonna do that. I need a show for next week, and we're just gonna do that when Zuckerman comes back from his Mexican holiday. <laughs> yeah. With that voice, uh, and I killed about a student that voice nurse, Mike. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's Mexico. It only costs four grand to get out of it. <laughs> oh my God, Zuckerman, that's horrible. It's horrifying. Why TMZ. I, uh, why Controversy. Are you such a girl? Spike Ferriston justifies killing <laughs> nurses. I didn't do Yeah, that's what you do down here. Instead of pinatas, why you can't kill I a child. That happening Jeez, so Zuckerman. Well. <laughs> you killed a child with a bat. Yeah, that's only 3500 bucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's awesome. Blake says, I'm looking for... <laughs> I'm moving on. I'm looking for a fun two or three year old daily driver with four doors. I've been looking at the F80 M3. Are there other things to consider <clears throat> other than the Mercedes C63 or the Audi S4? Yes. The Lexus GSF that no one talks about and is awesome. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> also, hmm... I mean, you're, you, he's probably priced a little above a Golf Hell, R. Hellcats, three. Hellcats are fun. Very fun. They're nothing but fun. Hellcats are fun. The Audi yeah. RS three mm -hmm. is more fun than the S four. Yeah. The mm. uh, Chevrolet SS, the manual and mag ride. Is awesome. What do you think it would be like buying a used Hellcat? <laughs> do you think that's a safe move? Like, I you would know, buy John, from... my partner, is, uh, is on his third engine, right? Is and he he's really? about to sell that car, yeah. Why is he on his third engine? I just, you know, Whoa. they just work keep, out. They just keep replacing the engines? I think he would, he, you know, and it, this is, I'm filtering it through him, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but he's mm. saying he's not letting the engine warm up before he gets on it, and then suddenly he's got a knock and a light. And <laughs> <laughs> wow. But, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, my God. I mean, I, and I would buy, buy it. and that, that's a car that encourages you to drive it like that. So, yeah, that's crazy. Yet they're delicious to drive. That you know? is crazy. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, the M3 is the is the the one there, but the RS3 rules. The C63 is I, a great car. I too. really like the C63. Yeah, that the takes C63. a little Hellcatness and a little M3 and puts it together. That's true. The mm -hmm. C63 is pretty rowdy. It's rowdy, it, but it's, it, it's it rides an angry nice, car. nice inside. And when you when you glub, when you go through a parking lot, you glub glub. It mm -hmm. has a nice glub glub to it yeah. that I'm a big fan <clears> of. <throat> the M3 sounds like nothing. Yeah, yeah. So I think you know. The good news is all of these cars, you could, there's nothing new under the sun here. You, you've you got the right things. I'll throw Lexus GSF and RS3 into that into your pile, Blake, but you're on the right track. Robert says, I own a stock Ford Focus RS. Is it worth putting seven grand plus into it close to where mine was, or is money better spent selling the RS and getting a used M3 with a manual? I live in New York City. And uh, I need daily-ish and track day fun. I got to be honest. All those mods I had in my car, if I had to pay for them, I would have not been happy. <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't. I don't think putting seven thousand dollars into a Focus RS gets you a car that's as good as an M3. It just doesn't. It improves the wow. Focus RS, but if you can sell the RS and get a better car, I would personally do that, especially because. Like, if I had a car that rode like my car rode in New York City roads, I'd be fucking pissed. My back would be killing me. It's like you can you can pay to start with a better floor, you know, and then you, you could always mod the M3 or something yeah, if you need more. Yeah, but you're modding out of class at that point. Right. You're taking a car that's you're taking a car that costs forty one to forty two thousand dollars new and you're getting into the to the fifty thousand dollar plus range. In fact, I would skip the used M three and I'd buy an M two. I'd rather have it. Yeah, you could buy a last gen M2. Yeah, the M2 is the one to have, but if you need yes. yeah, that because that'll keep the fun aspect of the RS. Yeah. 
That's what I would do, but uh, I would not put that much money into a car. And not that those mods didn't work, not that they weren't good mods, not that they didn't improve the car, and not that the people who make them don't do a good job. All of those things are true. But at that point, it's a lot of money, and you're modifying out of class. And I, if you can afford it, I would go to the next class of vehicle. That's my choice. Andy the Aussie says, Spike, can you please talk through the decision to sell the 8-ball 911? Well, now you get to answer it on my the, show. the money. It's all about the money. <laughs> someone made you the right offer? Um, Someone made me the right offer. I'm that not sure it was our, the right not, move to do. <laughs> some of our audience might not be familiar it's a with 68 the 68911L Trans Am race car. There it was. Uh, most notably on a, a poster uh, that Porsche made in, the, in 1969 after it was photographed on its first lap at Sebring. There I am in that car. I used this car, I think I bought it when I was uh, in the first season of Car Matchmaker. It was part of, really, part of marketing for the show. I, I drove the car in the show, and I used it on shoots like this, and put a lot of miles on it, and it's a nice you know, car. It, it took up a big part of my car buying budget <laughs> on a single car, and someone you know, made me an offer that I could not refuse, where I was uh, able to buy some other That's cars. That's a good time to that. sell a car. Yeah, yeah. Now, do I think that was the right move? I'm not so sure as I look at pictures of it right now. <laughs> but having, you know, uh, collected cars for 21 or so years, these cars are always around. You know, we Jerry and I talk about this, and Paul, we talk about we're, we're not uh, we're not precious about cars. So, so that tangerine car right there in that shop. So that car was owned by Sam Cabiglio who is the guy who sorts cars for Seinfeld. Seinfeld then bought it um, many years later and had that, um, I think the last season we were writing Seinfeld. It's also featured in the uh, episode, The Rye. You'll see it on the street there. Oh yeah, Jerry, the marble rye? <laughs> yeah, Jerry drove that and parked it on the street that night we were shooting with horses <laughs> and it made it in. <laughs> and we always laugh like someone would leave a 73 uh, <laughs> RS in perfect condition in the middle of the snow. Jerry decided to sell that car. I bought that car. I drove it for about 12 years. Then I sold it to Zuckerman to get him to stop driving old Jaguars when we were neighbors. I'm like, dude, you're driving the wrong stuff. Corvettes and Jag, just get rid of that stuff. Buy this car. And now Zuckerman still owns it. And it's always available for us to drive. It's never disappeared. And stuff... It, it's always around. So, you know, someday if I want to buy 8-Ball back, I know who has it. The guy's got a great car. He's, I'm sure, enjoying it, driving where, the hell out of it. Where in the world is that car? It was sold. I'm not going to say where it was sold, but it was sold through a friend of mine in New England, uh, Aston Martin, okay. New England, it's, Steve Serio, who did America. a great job. But it's in a great collection with a guy who appreciates it. And I'm sure if I called him up and said, hey, I want the car back, um, you know, I, he'd say, I'll let you know when I'm going to sell it. That's what we call the, the right of first refusal. If there's ever a car like that that you've sold, just call the owner and say, I don't want to buy it today, but if you ever do sell it, you know, let me know. The guy I bought my Countach from has that for me. He said, if I ever want to yeah, sell it, he yeah. wants to be able to match the offer. Yeah. It's the way it goes with these yeah. things, you know, and, and right now I'm I about- said he, I said he's going to have to pay double what he <clears throat> sold it to me for, though. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. He goes, I'm wait, I know. He you goes, you I know. can do that. You know, there's a car that just went from Seinfeld to Zuckerman and someone swooped in and is making an offer to Zuckerman. I can't say what the car is and, you know- we, Is it blue? Uh, well, I don't want to say what the car is. Okay. I don't want to talk about it. Okay. But, um, but uh, you know, that car um, was uh, offered- and to Jerry, and he's like, no, let it go. You know, we'll, we'll find it if we need to find it again. It's not the right time. And let's, you know, the three of us are now all about driving new things, kind of having the experience, and then let's drive something else, right? Cool. yeah. Otherwise, you're hoarding. Otherwise, you're hoarding. Yeah, well, you, you know, you both have a lot of stuff. So you got a, you got <coughs> I don't have as much as Seinfeld and No, Zuckerman Seinfeld has a lot of stuff, but he also, he has unlimited money, so it's different. He really does. Yeah, it's insane <laughs> what's going on with him. Yeah, um, but you know what? He's fucking still got it. His set was uh, his set at the Pantages was extremely on point. Is yes, he, he destroyed. As he likes to say, Spike, I'm very good at making money. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very good at it. <laughs> but he's now he's got a weird. You know, anybody who collects on that level has a weird set of anxieties that none of us can relate to. And it has to do with, is there too much in curating and getting stuff working and making it right? Yeah. So it's, it's a funny, different set of problems you deal with. But it's, trust me, nobody's happy. 
Nobody's happy. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter, matter what you have. Nobody's happy. The takeaway of the show. And you show, can only really drive happy. one of these cars at a time. That's why Haggerty one, Insurance is good. They understand yes. that. That's yeah. why Haggerty Insurance is affordable. That's why Plan Z has been working. Is because we, you know, like when Moise called me last week and he's because I want to drive the car. I go, go ahead. I'm in the 87. I'm having a great time. Yeah. We should talk about the Mercedes thing after this. I think maybe we should get a Mercedes together, Spike. Really, it's about pressuring J.G. Francis to <laughs> let this go. I, mean, right. I have no problem sharing cars with All you. Right. None. Uh, Kosher <laughs> SDI says, update on Chris from Shout Engine. Zach, have you talked to Chris in a bit? I haven't talked to him since Radwood. He was doing all right at Radwood. Yeah, no, I mean, he's he's got a job. He's uh, the chief uh, coder for a company, and that's where he's been focusing. So he still does Hooniverse with Gluckers now and then. Um, he made but he's a got lot like a real money job. doing other things besides this dumb shit. Yeah, show. He, he, he funds Shout Engine with other jobs. Yeah. So that's what he's always doing. All right, two more, and then we're going to get out of here. Kyle says, looking to get out of an upside down loan on a 2013 Jetta. I owe 11K, but it books for six. Oof. Credit's not great because the loan <laughs> is my only credit account. Recommendations? Uh,. I mean, how, uh, you should try to get into the cheapest, most reliable car you can that you don't owe money on. Like, you know, I bought that shitty Civic for thirty four hundred bucks, and I drove it for two years, and it helped me save money. Like, auto loans are rough, but especially if it sounds like you're in the situation you're in. Have you guys uh, tried the Fair app? You know, Ed's little no, app there, Fair app. What's that? You just uh, download the app, scan your license, the cars come up, and then you pick one. There's no time limit, no term limit, no loans, no contracts, no anything else. And you can keep it for three weeks or keep it for 30 years. It's, Interesting. It's up to you. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, you could, put, none this, of this you could crap. put this car up on Turo and use it to generate <clears throat> some money, That's maybe. an idea. I, mean, I like that. You could... You, check out, you should check out this Fair app and see how that goes. So you can't find anything really special there yet, yeah. but you can... It, what's great about it is it... It, it it's 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 on your terms. So if suddenly you move to New York and you got to work there, you just give the car back, and there's no mm. and there's no problem with it, and there's not a very big down payment for the car either. I Kyle, I'm sorry I can't be more helpful because I, you're asking fundamentally a financial question more than a car question, and I don't have a lot of experience with car <clears throat> loans. I just don't. I've either bought cars in cash or I've leased them, and I I just. I just don't know what to do if you're upside down. Maybe you could find a way to trade it in to a dealer who will give you more than book value on it on trade for some reason or another. Maybe you could put it on Turo and use it to generate some money. Um, I'm I'm just not sure. I don't have a I don't have a lot of answers for you. You know what you do is what you do. You light it on fire in Mexico. <laughs> Zuckerman, please you could, don't you, worry about it. You They're never gonna know. The other question is, what's it insured for, and can you make it disappear? <laughs> uh, all right, last question, and we're gonna end this show for the same money. Nate says, what's better, a nine nine three Carrera two Ooh. or a nine six four Carrera two? Wow. Is the maintenance the same? Don't know. Um, what what are the miles? What's going on with let's it? Let's assume the same. Let's assume the same miles. Let's assume the same color. Let's assume everything is the same except one is a nine six four and one is a nine nine. I know what I would have answered three or four years ago, but that answer has changed. I would have said the nine nine three is the car, but now I say the nine six four. I think it's a pure nine eleven. I think it has a pure nine eleven shape. I like it how I, I like the smallness of it and how it drives. And these days, when I'm in the 993 C2, it feels like I'm in a, a newfangled Volkswagen Beetle. It feels bubbly inside, and I don't like it. And I don't like how it drives. So I'm going to say the 964. Aside from this healthy market for 964s that's out there, I don't think you can go wrong with that car right now. Uh, as far as uh, I. I disagree with Spike. I prefer the 993 personally. Mm -hmm. um, I just I like the look a little better, uh, especially with stock for stock wheels. I really don't like the 964 Carrera 2 stock wheels. I'm not a fan of that, but you can change that. Um, maintenance. Don't change it. The, um, the 993 has the, is it called Vario Ram? Yep. 993 has Vario Ram, which makes the engine rebuild at 100,000 miles more expensive. Mm -hmm. So... I think the day-to-day -day maintenance, the oil changes, the tires, and dumb stuff like that is very similar between the two, but that 100,000-mile service in a 993 is like 20 grand because <clears throat> of the Vario mm -hmm. Ram system. Mm -hmm. I do know that a 95 993 is OBD1, and you can put some of the later Vario Ram stuff on it without affecting your emissions compliance and get quite a bit of power bump out of that. 
I do know that. Now, if it was a C2S uh, last year, 98, and silver and or black only. Different story? I would change my mind. <laughs> <laughs> or dark blue. All right. But not thank, ocean blue metallic. Not thank you color. very much, Nate. Uh, Spike Ferriston is the host of Car uh, Spike's Car Radio on the Podcast One Network. What else do you want to plug? Anything? That's good. I like that. Yeah, find me there. Find me on Instagram. Spike Ferriston on guys. Instagram. Plan Z. We're going to talk uh, Mercedes off mic at Bill's later this week, and we're going to discuss how we can go over to this guy's place and buy one of his Benzitos. Yeah. I think I think old classic Benzo is in order soon. It's great. And uh, I'm going to have you on the Watch Show again soon. Okay. On the Watch and Listen podcast. Thanks for coming in, bud. All right. Appreciate it. Me. Good show. Enjoy your BMXing with your sons. Yeah. Uh, getting dirty. <laughs> the Smoking Tire Podcast is powered by Shout Engine. Get your own damn podcast at shoutengine.com. It's easy. All you need is a microphone, a connection to the internet, and preferably something to say. Uh, we've got who's coming in Thursday for the live audience. Thursday, 5 p.m. Pacific, we've got the host of Overhaul in Chris Jacobs. Legend uh, is coming in studio. That'll be fun. Submit your super chat questions when we post it Thursday morning. And uh, I'll see you all fools later. Have a great day. Happy New Year. Woohoo! <laughs>